When you're hiring, it feels amazing to finally close out a job search. But what if you could get rid of the search and just match? You can with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hi, hello. It's Josh Bo. It's Pod Maverick. It's After Dark. I'm coming to you guys live, um, just about 10:32 Texas time. The Mavericks just lost to the New Orleans Pelicans, 118 to 108. If you just looked at that score without really paying attention to anything going on today in the NBA, probably not too shocked. But of course, the news came down, uh, you know, about a half hour, maybe an hour or so before the game started that the Pelicans were uh, not interested in doing all they could to win this game. No Zion Williamson, no uh, Brandon Ingram, no CJ McCollum, no Trey Murphy either, who's also like low key, one of their most important players uh, since they've started winning some games when he came back from his meniscus surgery. Should have been an easy win for the Mavericks, even without Luka, without Derek Lively, without Dante Exum. Still should have been an easy win, considering this is the same Mavericks roster that just ran the streaking New York Knicks off the floor for three quarters the other night uh, and then held on, held on to their 20-point win. It got ugly, but they still won. Uh, And the Knicks were playing like the best team in the NBA. So can't really use the excuse that the Mavericks were, were that undermanned, especially with how the Pelicans were looking. So not a great loss. Uh, as you can tell, it is just me, Josh Bo, uh, and one of the editors of MazMoneyBall.com, co-host of Pod Maverick. Um, Kirk requested the day off uh, today. Uh, he didn't request it today. He requested tonight off, and he did it like a week or so ago. Like he did it well in advance before we even knew what this game was going to look like. And I got really pit- I got really mad uh, the way the game was going on, I, just because, of course, Kirk is abandoning me. Before the Mavericks play another game against a team that really, you know, is not trying to do its its best to win. You look before I get really deep into uh, this game, and I'm sure how frustrating it was the Mavericks fans. The Mavericks, for the last like 14 games, you can count maybe three or four where it felt like both teams were either full strength or or trying to win. Um. As someone who gets paid peanuts to cover the Mavericks and as someone who has done media for so long that the fandom part of me is dissipated and like I'm more of a media person now. So while yes, it is it is fun as a fan to watch the Dallas Mavericks uh, club to death, the Portland Trailblazers in two straight games, 
for me, I'm tired of watching crappy teams. And there's a lot of crappy teams in the NBA this season. It's historically awful. Uh, Portland, San Antonio, Charlotte, Washington, and Detroit are not only the five worst teams in the NBA, they are five of like the worst teams in the last like 10 to 15 years. And they're all playing together in the same season. So I'm tired of watching the Mavericks, you know, since Friday, December 22nd. Um, they have either, you know, aside from a, a small handful of games, but I would say like four out of the 14, aside from those four games, it's either been the Mavericks are missing too many guys. So what's the point? The other team missing so many guys. So what's the point? Or they're playing against such a crappy team. that There's not even really anything to take away from it. Um, so not to dismiss, you know, Mavs fans that have, you know, you should have fun when the Mavericks beat the Portland Trailblazers by like 40 points. But for me, I don't really, like, I don't really care. I want to watch better basketball. I want to know more about the Mavericks. I don't learn anything when the Mavericks, uh, take a big runny dump on one of these tanking teams. I don't learn anything when Luca and half the team's not playing against the Minnesota Timberwolves, which was another game earlier. They lost by 10. I don't really learn much when the Mavericks beat an undermanned team with Luca. Full sh- you know, I just want to learn more about the team. And we're 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 at January thirteenth. We are you know getting close to crossing the halfway mark, and there's still so much we need to learn about this Mavericks team because so many people have been hurt, and their schedule has just been outrageous. And I'm just tired of watching. I'm tired of watching bad teams. I'm tired of watching teams not play at full strength. I'm tired of resting. Uh, This would have been a really cool benchmark game for the Mavericks if uh, the Pelicans were at full strength. Maybe the Mavericks would have gotten a slightly better effort because it's pretty obvious that they underestimated their opponent tonight. Um, So I just I just want to watch better basketball. You know, fans, you guys have the 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 choice to uh, to turn off the TV or not buy tickets if you don't want to watch the team because it's not a good opponent or you know someone's hurt or or something like that i have to watch i have to spend my saturday night watching this and what do i get rewarded with i get rewarded with watching the mavericks uh take a dump on the middle middle court of the american Airlines center that's two shit uh metaphors in the first you know five minutes of this podcast so i hope you're ready um they lose 118 108 the pelicans basically played two starters herb jones and jonas valanciunas um Otherwise, it was, it was guys at the back of the bench. Still a talented team. I like Dyson Daniels. I love Jordan Hawkins. Um, I love Najee Marshall. I mean, Valanciunas is still pretty good. Herb Jones is pretty good. Larry, uh, Larry Dance Jr. is a pretty good backup. Uh, big. Jose Alvarado might be the best backup point guard in the NBA. They got some guys. They got some guys for sure. You know, let's not shortchange the talent on the Pelicans roster. They've done some good job. They've done a good job at, at building their team. Um, but I'm sorry. The Mavericks literally beat the Knicks with OG Ananobi, who might be with might be playing the best basketball of anyone in the NBA when the Knicks came into Dallas, uh, when the Knicks came into town. Uh, so there's no excuses. They should have won. They had multiple opportunities to take the game over, and they didn't. Um, they, had, they got a five-point lead going into halftime. Uh, squandered it very early in the third quarter, built another five-point lead uh, later in the third quarter, squandered that, then trailed the fourth quarter by eight, and that was pretty much it because the Mavericks just didn't have it. Um, This is a game where the Mavericks should have won, and I think fans should be very disappointed and upset that the Mavericks lost this game and and put on this kind of performance. I'm not ready to say doom and gloom yet uh, because I feel like, you know, I need to see Luka, Kyrie, Jones, Exum, Lively. Those five. Those five have played a half of NBA basketball this season. A half. They've played about 50 possessions. That is nothing. And those most of those possessions when they did play was when Exum was kind of in and out of the rotation. They have barely played since Exum became, you know, one of the best players on the roster in the month of December when he was filling in for Kyrie Irving. That version of Exum is not played with Lively and Jones and Luca uh, and Kyrie. So we still need to see those five. Um, They haven't played a lot together. I want to see what those guys look like. But in the meantime, you know, the the depth issues, the size issues, they're not going away. Um, I actually thought it was a funny thing. Jonas Valanciunas had like eight points and like five rebounds. Like he had a pretty 
normal line going into the fourth quarter, I remember looking at the box score and be like, why isn't he killing this team? Like, why aren't the Pelicans going to him more? Why isn't he getting more touches? Like, why? Like, he dominates the Mavericks at full strength um, sometimes. So, like, why isn't he doing it now? Of course, he grabs like four or five offensive rebounds in the fourth quarter, uh, scores six points, gets fouled a bunch, kind of pretty much took over the game and controlled it, had a blocked shot on Kyrie in the fourth, which was really nice play by him. So he ended up, you know, dominating the game, 14 and 12, had seven assists, passed the ball well out of double teams. Uh, the other new story, you know, Jordan Hawkins, who had 34, career di- tied a career high. Uh, I'm going to look it up right now. I should have looked it up before we went recording, but I believe his previous career high, who did it come against these Mavericks? No, it did not. It came against the Denver Nuggets. He had 31, but he did have 25 against the Mavericks back on November 14th. Um, so the Mavericks are familiar with him. He, he, they know what he's capable of. They know what the Pelicans lineup is. They know that they're kind of throwing out a junk lineup. They're setting all their guys because they would rather try to win a Tuesday's game than they'd rather try to win after a back-to-back tonight. And the Mavericks acted like they had never seen Jordan Hoggins before. Uh, leaving him pretty open not assigning him their best defenders. Uh, Josh Green looking completely clueless trying to guard him after he just did a great job against Jalen Brunson. Not sure why the Mavericks didn't face guard him more, uh, considering the, the options the Pelicans had otherwise on the from their perimeter players. They kind of let him run free like he was just another guy, and he's not. Um, I know he's a rookie. Mavs Twitter was acting like some scrub was going off against him. Like, guys, he was a tremendous college player. And he was the 14th overall pick in the draft uh, last summer. He's good. Like, he's a, he's a rookie, but he's got skills. So for the way the Mavericks kind of treated him, like he wasn't even part of their scouting report, is blowing my mind. Um, the way, like, I don't know how to explain this without sounding really mean, but in the fourth quarter when the Pelicans were trying to run this game out with Valanchunas in the post, knowing that the Mavericks were double, like basic basketball principles is you put your best shooter the closest um, to the post player that's going to get doubled because you want him to be one pass away from a double team makes it harder to, to double. You know, it may, it forces the opposing team to maybe double from the weak side and then you can do swing, swing, swing. But, but you do that to kind of force the defense to adjust. The Mavericks decided to double off of Jordan Hawkins one pass away multiple times. Made a th- I think he made one or two threes. Missed more, could have been worse. Uh, he got a drive on a closeout from a three, uh, three point like shot fake. Uh, not you know, because the Mavericks were able to rotate a little bit, but like just the attention to detail was like not there. Like the game plan was not there. Like there was nothing about this game that made it seem like the Mavericks were prepared. And that goes to coaching. Uh, Jason Kidd did not coach a very good game. I thought he coached an okay game for about the first half. Um, and then the second half, it was just like. They just kind of did what they wanted to do. Uh, they gave to Kyrie. They gave the ball to Kyrie, hoped and prayed. And then defensively, I don't know what they were doing. They didn't do anything. Um, they didn't do anything against Hawkins that they should have. They started to double late when the game was already over on the perimeter, which I thought maybe they could have done a little bit more earlier in the game. Although credit to New Orleans, they did have 29 assists. Uh, they were passing the ball very well. Only 10 toner, only 10 turnovers considering who was out on the floor. Not bad. Um, I thought Alvarado played a really good fourth quarter in controlling the game. Um, but yeah, I don't know. They, they played. I wrote a post. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it uh, about Josh Green's defense against Jalen Brunson and the win against the Knicks on Thursday. And specifically how Josh was picking up Jalen full court almost every single time. First three possessions of the game for the Knicks, Josh Green is right on top of Brunson as soon as Brunson touches the ball in the backcourt and follows him all the way up, gunks up the Knicks offense, allows the Mavericks to get off to a 44-26 to uh, first quarter lead. Obviously, the Mavericks offense was great uh, in the first half against the Knicks, but I don't think that they get to that big lead if they don't have that defensive identity and pressure uh, with Josh Green. And obviously, that's a coaching decision too. Like the coaches, I don't think Green freelanced picking up Brunson. Like that was obviously something in the game plan. Um. And when the Mavericks play aggressive on defense, they also can play faster. Fast break points, uh, turning teams over, getting out in transition. They had a ton of fast break points. Like Correlation causation there is not that hard uh, to discern when you watched how 
the Mavericks opened that game defensively against the Knicks. Tonight, against a team with less offensive talent, I think, they played softer, and I don't understand. You know, they played on their heels. They allowed the the Pelicans to kind of get into the sets that they wanted. They allowed Hawkins to get free um, when there wasn't a lot of alternatives for New Orleans scoring the ball on the perimeter. Um, it was baffling. The Mavericks had nine fast break points. Nine. I understand maybe the Pelic. I don't have the numbers. Maybe the Pelicans' transition defense is significantly better um, than the Knicks. But to go from 26 fast break points to nine, like that's to me, that's a failure of coaching uh, defensively. But that's also like, you know, we can beat Jason Kidd over the head as much as we want. He's not really going anywhere right now. But it's also on the players. Like, I don't know. The, the players didn't come out ready to play, and you could put some of that on why didn't the coaches get a ring to play. These guys get paid millions of dollars to play. Like, they needed to come out ready to play, and they didn't play fast. And they know they needed to play fast. When you don't have Luka Doncic on the floor, he's not available. Kyrie's your only, your best player on the floor. What does Kyrie like to do? He likes to go fast. What does Derek Jones Jr. like to do? What When is he best at? Going fast. What is Josh Green best at doing? Going fast. Dwight Powell, going fast. Playing a slow half-court game with Luka makes sense, but doing it without him and not forcing the issue was un, like was inexcusable. And and like I said, that's coaching, but that's also on the players. The players can do that too. Um, you shouldn't have a coach telling you to, to, to run after you just played that game like the Knicks, which go, like I just think the Mavericks let their foot off the gas because they thought they were going to cruise to an easy win with all these guys out, and they, they paid for it. Um, it's really disappointing to see the performance that some of these guys put out. I thought Josh Green going from, I mean, he ended up scoring nine points, but I thought he was invisible. Um, I thought that was a really disappointing effort after what he did against the Knicks um, and kind of this yo-yo act uh, of him, his performances is just, it's, it's pretty maddening for Mavs fans and you can't blame like, Oh, you know, he plays worse with Luca because Luca doesn't give him the ball. He needs the ball. Uh, no Luca tonight, and Green looked pretty bad. Uh, he had back-to-back uh, um, bricks at the rim on the fast break. Um, didn't make his presence felt defensively. He should be able to hang with a guy like Hawkins, and he did not. Um, and that was a shame. But, I mean, you go down the board, it's not just Josh Green. Basically, everyone but Kyrie Irving, Hardaway, and Jones played all not great games. Powell did his best. He had nine rebounds, eight assists, three steals, did his best, but then got dominated in the fourth quarter by Valanciunas, which is that's kind of what's going to happen. Um, mm. Grant Williams followed up his, you know, people kind of saw his game against the Knicks and was like, is he turning a corner? No, no. 14 minutes, five fouls, zero points, one block, one assist, one rebound. Uh, dreadful. Um, it was actually pretty funny watching Grant Williams. Um and they're like talking about his foul trouble. And I was like, they should just let him stay out there and foul out. <laughs> like, like the, the sooner he fouls out, the better for the Mavericks. Cause he, every time he checked into the game off the bench, the Pelicans went on a massive run. Um, the run that I think that got them a nine point or 11 point lead um, in the first quarter, second quarter uh, happened when Grant checked into the game. And then when the Pelicans got back into the game in the third quarter and, and took, their lead again in the third midway through the third uh, that also corresponded with Grant checking into the game. Like both times he checked into the game, the Pelicans went up by more than two possessions. So I don't know. I don't know what they got to do with him, um, but he killed the team tonight. Like he was just not good in his minutes. And then Jaden Hardy, you know, 23 minutes, eight points, uh, you know, there's a weird I keep hearing he's playing better. I guess he is compared to what he was doing in October and parts of November. Um, But for the month of December, he's averaging about 10 a game, shooting well from three, but he's shooting awful on twos, um, not playing any defense like at all. Like he, like the defense was really bad. And and if we want to talk about lineups and stuff, we got to talk about the fourth quarter. Then we're going to take a quick break um, because I don't want to talk all night Um, because this game sucked. I didn't want to watch it. Uh, I don't want to watch, you know, G League rosters, you know, when teams sit their stars. Uh, I didn't, you know, I was already in a foul mood before the game started, so I apologize. Um, You know, I'm spending my Saturday night. It's almost 11 o'clock doing this when I could be doing literally anything else. I'd be more productive with my time. Um, The fourth quarter, 
like midway through the fourth, like the time of the game where it's like they needed to make a run to get back into it or you're in you're in too big a hole to make a run. They had Jaden Hardy, Kyrie Irving, and Tim Hardaway Jr. all out on the floor. Uh, defensively, the Pelicans kind of did whatever they wanted, which is not surprising because Kyrie played a great overall game, but his defense was pretty much non-existent tonight, um, which is I don't really care that much. I mean, I don't know how to say this. Like, he should be better defensively, but he was doing his part on offense for the most part. So just kind of like Luca, where Luca has to conserve energy on offense, and sometimes I just don't even think about Luca's defense, even if it's bad. That was kind of how I felt about Kyrie. But then you double that down with Tim Hardaway Jr., who played an awful defensive game, and Hardy, who's just too small to even really play a good defensive game. Uh, it was bizarre. Uh, I just don't really understand why that was the lineup that they chose to go down the stretch. Well, let me phrase that. I kind of do understand, but they should have done something else. Um it was obvious kid was frustrated with green because green did not, that was, that should have been green spot, right? If green is playing well, that's who comes in. That's who's in the game at the important part of the fourth quarter. Uh, green wasn't playing well. Grant was not playing well. Like the, the thing that I would have done was I would have gone back to AJ Lawson who played six minutes, uh, was a plus four in his six minutes. Looked good. Um, well, Looked fast. I mean, he was only one of three. Missed a wide open three. I think he missed a wide open corner three in the third quarter or the fourth quarter. I can't remember which, but it was in the second half. And I felt like Kid kind of pulled him after that. Um, Kid kind of has a quick hook with these guys at the end of the bench if they don't make their open shots, which is funny because he's like a defensive minded coach. I would have had Lawson as the fifth guy if he if he had no confidence in putting Green back out there. Felt like playing Hardy, um, Hardy Kyrie. Uh, and Hardaway, like, and you're down. Like, I don't know how you're going to get back into the game unless you're hoping New Orleans misses shots. Um, really, that's it. Like, they just miss open shots, and you hope that you've got enough offense to juice you juice you out there. I want to look it up on cleaning the glass before we go to break. Uh, I actually want to see what that trio does uh, together because I can't imagine the defense is that good when we've got uh, Kyrie, Tim Hardaway Jr., Jaden Hardy, sorry to do this live on the podcast, but I want to know. Uh, actually, I'm surprised. For, they're actually pretty good. Um, they're plus 18 points per 100 possessions. Defense is actually pretty good too. So I don't know. Maybe Kid had some data. Um, yeah, with with uh, with Kyrie, Jaden, and Tim Hardaway Jr. on the floor, the Mavericks score 130 per 100 and give up 111 per 100 possessions. So. There you go. Kid went with the data analytics ruining the game that we love. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but that's clearly why he went to that. There's data backing it up. So uh, silly me uh, shows what I know. And I only cover this team uh, every single damn day. So we're about 22 minutes in the podcast. I'm talking about myself. I need a break. We're going to take a quick commercial break. I don't know how much we're going to talk on the other end. Cause I don't really know what else to talk about, but I got to get an ad break in here. Otherwise, all of this is for nothing, um, except for, you know, your sweet comments, which we, we hold near and dear to our heart. So like the stream if you're watching it live. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching us live or on YouTube after the fact. If you're on our audio-only feed, uh, you know, please subscribe to us, uh, whichever uh, uh, audio podcast you use to listen to us, audio podcast app, that is. And we'll be right back after this message. Okay, we're back. Uh, Mavericks lose an embarrassing game to the New Orleans Pelicans, 118-108. A lot of, lot of March 2023 vibes for the Mavericks. They lose a game they should have won against an undermanned team. Uh, and then Jason Kidd, after the game, just kind of gives the, uh, I'm just the coach, I don't know what's going on excuse, uh, which is what he was doing a lot last season when the Mavericks were in their tailspin. So the Mavericks really played all the hits uh, tonight, which is I'm not going to get worked up about kid quotes because it's it just feels like, I don't know, there's something else I could get mad at maybe. Um, I'm not really mad uh, other than the fact that I was mad that the Pelicans tried to punt this game and, and still won. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think the schedule isn't getting any easier. The Mavericks are going to play a full-strength Pelicans team um, on Monday. 
Um, that's going to be a difficult game. We don't know if Luca or Exum or Lively will be back. I think Lively will be back. He got upgraded to questionable before this game and then and then got downgraded and was out. So Lively should be back, I think, on Monday, I would guess. Um, then you're playing at Los Angeles, at Golden State. Neither of those teams are actually playing all that well, but to go on the road makes it tougher. Um, then you come back, you play home, Boston, Phoenix. So that's four games against teams that are trying – to win a lot with one of them, Boston uh, playing as about as well as any other team in the NBA. Um, they get a reprieve to go to Atlanta, which Atlanta is playing terribly. So that's, you know, we'll see what we'll see there. Uh, then Sacramento, Orlando, Minnesota, Milwaukee, Philadelphia. So if you look at the Mavericks next few games, home, New Orleans at La- at Lakers at golden state, home Boston, home Phoenix, at Atlanta, home Sacramento, home Orlando, at Minnesota, home Milwaukee, at Philadelphia. You're looking at one team, Atlanta, which is currently like totally out of the playoff picture. Um, That's a tough schedule. That's a tough part. Like we're going to learn about this Mavericks team real fast if they can get healthy. Um, this is going to be a pretty good gauntlet of games here. Um, so we're, we're going to see what happens. Um, I, you know, otherwise I don't know. I don't know what to say. This was just such a bad loss. I didn't really talk about, you know, more specific, like the stats, the, the Mavericks loss. Pelican scored 50 points in the paint. So 50 to 40 points in the paint advantage. Um, they got to the free throw line 37 times. They made 28 free throws. Mavericks made 19. That's huge. Low key, like kind of the reason that maybe this was a game. Um, I'm sure people were a little frustrated to see the foul discrepancy and the free throw line discrepancy. But the, the fact of the matter is the Mavericks played terrible defense. Couldn't keep their man in front of them, uh, which led to a lot of cheap fouls on drives and at the rim. Cause when you're letting guys blow by you, you don't want them to get wide open layups and dunks, so you foul them. So that was one part of it. Second part of it, the Mavericks are too small. Valanciunas got, so, got some good free throw attempts. Pelicans got some free throw attempts from offensive rebounds near the basket. So that part help, didn't hurt, help at all. And for the Mavericks, they don't – who's drawing free throws on this team? Um, Kyrie Irving should probably shoot more free throws, uh, but he does not engage in kind of the – he does not foul bait. Let's just say that, which is admirable, but that's why he doesn't get a lot of free throws. Um, he's kind of got the Monte Ellis issue where he definitely is near the basket for a good um, portions of the game. But since he doesn't contort and twist his body in a way that, you know, he tries to make shots when he goes to the basket, he doesn't try to get fouled, which is fun to watch. And I respect that, but that's why he doesn't get the free throw line a lot. And then otherwise, you know, you're just looking at a lot of guys that don't, drive the ball a lot you know Derek Jones and Hardaway did okay but the Mavericks had one free throw attempt uh from a bench player which was Lawson who got an and one like no one else really on the bench is going to do much to get into the lane even with Jaden Hardy so um that's why you know the Mavericks were just limited with their with uh dribble drivers tonight excuse me um other thing to say um is Maxi Kleba's back which I'm sure for some of the people listening um, don't really care because uh, I know Maxi Kleba is not a, a favorite among the online, very online Mavericks uh, community. But I actually thought he was like the one bright spot from this game. Um, he only played 11 minutes, and I know that was kind of weird. Not that he played 11 minutes because Jason Kidd said he was on a minutes restriction. said it would be 10 to 12 minutes. When you're in their minutes restriction is that short, I wasn't sure why he was playing at all. You know, like if he can only play 12 minutes, why don't you just wait until he can play a little bit more? But I mean, I'm not going to judge a training staff or or how they view that because I don't know any better. So, but when he did play, he was okay. Plus five and 11 minutes. I thought the first quarter or second where when it, when he played in the first, because he had a stint in the first half and a stint in the second half. When he played in the first half, I thought that was the best the Mavericks looked as a team for m- most of the game, maybe outside of the end of the first half. Uh, just having another big, and I know Maxi isn't like a true center big, but just having someone that can play the four and small ball five 
that can guard, um, that can rebound, just makes a world of difference. Um, he did, you know, miss both of his threes. He was one of three from the floor. So obviously we need to see what his offense looks like because it did not look good before uh, he went out with a dislocated toe. So that needs to come around. But with the Mavericks depth right now, he's a sight for sore eyes. And hopefully he can make some shots uh, and that'll help a lot. But there wasn't a lot to, to there wasn't a lot of good from this game to take. So that's how I'm taking it. I thought he looked okay um, in his 11 minutes, at least defensively. So so we'll see from there. But I think I'm going to go talking for about 30 minutes by myself. No Kirk. Apologize, guys. I know you were probably fired up because Kirk, Kirk would have been fired up, I'm sure, uh, if he got to talk about this game. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see where we go from there. I'm sure me and Kirk will be back on Monday as Mavericks play the same Pelicans team. And hey, maybe with everyone back from New Orleans, the Mavericks give a little bit better effort. We will see. But I'm Josh Bow of Pod Maverick. This is your After Dark Game Recap. The Mavericks lose to the New Orleans Pelicans 118-108. You guys enjoy your Saturday night or your early Sunday morning, depending on, on where you're listening and when you're listening. Uh, and we will talk to you guys later. See you guys. Be well.